When I was younger, I was really scared of seeing ghosts and entities and feeling everything that everybody else was feeling and being just so high sensitive. I woke up in the middle of the night with something choking me. It was the same thing. It was horrible. And like I was, I would, someone else was sleeping next to me. And um, this person, like, it was so creepy that they, uh, that she didn't wake up. Like she didn't wake up. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> like trying to breathe and it was so yeah. scary and I saw like this shadow figure and eventually I managed to like I could move my body it wasn't the sleep paralysis mm -hmm. I could I would literally I, I like I literally felt and I saw like red stripes all like around my neck Oh my god, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, wow, it's been really a very long time. Yeah, so great to have you here. <laughs> Welcome to Insanity again. I love the Insanity space, of course. Okay, for anyone who doesn't know me yet, my name is Karisha. I am a spiritual coach for parents that have kids with psychic abilities. And I help parents explaining how to deal with their kids and how to help their kids. And yeah, how to work with them. Because sometimes... Uh, kids with spiritual abilities are very scared I mean I can speak from experience I've been that kind of kid when I was younger and um, when I was younger I was really scared of seeing ghosts and entities and feeling everything that everybody else was feeling and yeah. being just so high sensitive and I didn't know what to do with it um, so I learned how to do it and I'm currently helping other people parents help their kids and of course they also help kids but only from like the age of 13 or 12 yeah young, younger it's just like it's harder to teach them what to do wow that's so exciting how yeah. how, how many requests do you have there's 20 percent of the entire world has psychic abilities 20 percent wow yeah, yeah. that's that's a lot um and i'm not really good with marketing so <laughs> My requests are not that high, only if I like focus on my marketing marketing uh, techniques. But I'm yeah. But do they come um, from Holland or from everywhere? Yeah. So my uh, I, f I focus mostly on the Netherlands. But mm -hmm. before that, I also made a lot of content in English, and then I had people from India, um, people from Ohio in America um yeah like basically all over the place that's a really exciting job i think yeah i love it <laughs> yeah love it. so all the people out there if you have any questions for carisha um let her know in the comments later and um oh yeah another another thing is um i have a discord channel now or let's say insanity has a discord channel so we have a little community there and uh, for all the people who like to chat about spiritual philosophical topics whatsoever so uh, we have a little space there and the idea is to grow it and we also have voice channels so whoever likes to chat also with more than one person so like with, with more people is always invited to join uh, the discord server because the next step will be to have recordings with more people so more like open sessions so not just one-on-ones i will keep doing them of course but i would like to make it a little bit bigger and to invite more people uh, for interviews or for just like yeah open sessions to chat a bit and to upload that because I think there can be so many great opinions on that topic that we are discussing and so many questions also because for example the whole topic with uh, psychic abilities um, people who didn't experience anything yet might have a lot of questions yeah and also people actually have sometimes uh, experiences but they don't quite recognize like recognize them as experiences Oh, yeah, probably they think they were dreaming or something. Yeah, or they were like, oh, that was just something stupid that I had as a child. Yeah, and like, yeah. Come on, seriously, like, wake up. <laughs> yeah. Like, there is more to this life than just everything you see around you. And um, yeah, also, like, the thoughts that enter your mind or, like, the feelings that you feel in your body. There's, like, so many more to this dimension. Let's put it like that. <laughs> why, why do you think that so often People have these kind of experiences when they are children and they kind of lose the ability or the sensitivity when they grow up. Personally, I think 
that it's because of the environment they're in. So when you're younger, you're more in like a um, shielded environment, like with mm -hmm. your parents, maybe just some friends at school. And sometimes like after kids go to school, like around the age of four or five, I think in Germany it's six. Yeah, five, six. yeah. I think it's around six, yeah. Yeah, um, that's the moment you sort of start to get so many more impulses and triggers from your external world that you're going to put your focus instead of on yourself. Um, you're going to focus more on what is happening in your external world. And so you're not really connected to yourself anymore. And besides school also focuses on grades and becoming better, comparing yourself with others and so you basically lose this deeper connection that you have with yourself because your focus is more on everything around you instead of on others yeah. yeah instead of on yourself yeah uh, that's a big thing i think you could be you could be right with that because um when you take more time to focus on yourself to explore your feelings to explore your own sensitivity towards your environment um then of course, you are more open to everything. And when you focus on other people, it, it just makes sense. I mean, your focus shifts to others. So, of course, it then goes away from yourself. And that's why you don't experience the things. And this is what we all, um, actually get back through meditation. Because then we can shift our focus back to ourselves. And this, this is how everything can start again. Yes, exactly. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, like when we did a guided meditation for you. Um, yeah. Like, that's exactly what you notice. Like, you first, you have to reconnect with yourself, uh, ask for your soul to come back in because you're not focused on yourself anymore. And I think as kids, especially in the beginning phase of life, you are the center of your, your own world. Yes. Everybody else, like, in your mind, you're so hyperly focused on uh, what do I like? What do I like? What do I like? What do I not like? And everybody else doesn't, like, nobody else really matters in your life. Only yeah. as long as they do whatever you want them to do. <laughs> Kids are, kid, children are really selfish, but the, like, they have the right to be selfish. <laughs> I just want to say, sounds like my lifestyle right now. <laughs> <laughs> are you a little four-year-old? <laughs> See. <laughs> it's also good. It's also good. Yeah. But yeah, the empathy for others around you is less heightened as as a kid. And so you experience life more from your own point of view mm -hmm. instead of how does another like how does someone else experience it? So yeah. But anyway, to really experience this like your own psychic abilities means connecting with who you are and connecting to your soul. And only from that point is uh, like your experiences can grow, your gifts can grow yeah. and your abilities can bloom, basically. Let me tell you a little bit about truth or dare. The idea is that we always have to say the truth um, and no matter what we ask each other, because I've realized uh, some time ago already that no matter if you're in a podcast, if you're in a regular conversation, people always hold something back and it's not just for bad reasons or something. Um, you always try to say things in a nice way and that's super normal in our society to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and when we become adults it grows into a fear of judgment, like super often we just do these kind of things and we don't even question why we leave something out, why we don't tell the complete story, for example. So we just tell the nice parts. And I thought, um, let's be super honest, not leave anything out um, and not be afraid of judgment. Because after the episode, I'm pretty much sure we will think nothing bad happened. So it, it, sometimes it's just about crossing this border and doing it anyway, although you feel uncomfortable probably sometimes with say, saying something. And... Um, in the end, we will always see it's it's fine. I'm, I'm super convinced about that because this is my experience. Like sometimes it's just about just doing it and realizing it's not that bad. But still, of course, there can be topics or there can be questions that we don't want to reply to because this is probably too personal. For that, there is also um, a very honest option. We can always say truth socks. 
uh, we actually can say it three times. And <laughs> when we say truth sucks, this is the moment when we ask Jacques to block the question because then he appears and then you can skip the I question. Suck. I check. <laughs> yeah, you don't know each other yet, right? No. Oh, he, oh yeah, he was writing you messages because you yes. reminded him of, of his first love. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, so Jacques is a very, very um, important part of the Truth or Dare episode. Yeah, yeah, we are working together and uh, he's always drunk. So whenever you have questions for Jacques, you need to ask him. Uh, I will translate it because he always just talks to me. He's, he's always strange. drunk. Yeah, he's a strange guy. <laughs> You know, this makes me think of Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> like, he's Jack Sparrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's Jack Sparrow. Okay, you can go, you can go. So, my first question to you. What is your most recent spiritual experience? When does a spiritual experience actually begin? So, for me, for example, two days ago, Sunday. Yeah, yeah like three days ago. But I, was, um, I was laying in bed and I was like in a deep meditation. Mm -hmm. And... I was seeing colors. So I had my eyes closed and I, I saw many, many colors and I saw a deep purple color, like, uh, like beautiful shapes. I was just looking at them. Like, I don't even know what it was, like just things like um, forms. I, I don't know. And, and light in a really, pur like in a deep, deep purple or even already pink color. And I saw that and I thought, wow, that's the deepest pink I've ever seen. And then I had to laugh about it, but my eyes are closed. So I thought, okay, that's the deepest color I've ever seen, but with my eyes closed. How crazy is that? <laughs> so, so this was like a crazy moment because I'm currently thinking a lot about how we experience the world through our senses and how much weight does it actually have or how important is it? What sense is the most important to me? Like all these questions I'm asking myself currently. Um, because I was so focused on the sense of sight. And now I'm not sure anymore, since I can see with my eyes closed, I don't know anymore. <laughs> and th like, this was a really huge thing. Um, also, I have, I, I could say I have, I have them all the time, like every day when I need something, for example. So I need little basic things, like a package to arrive on time like a parking lot in front of my door, little things. I just ask for them and then I turn my focus away and I get them. And I do this all the time, which for me are spiritual experiences because I, I'm connecting with source energy. I'm, I'm connecting with my surrounding completely. So, But this is like daily base. A bigger experience when we can talk about like psychic abilities um, it's already a couple of months ago. I was just chilling on my couch because I was just tired from my working day. I saw a friend of mine sitting in a chair looking at a screen and a light came out of that screen. And I remember her saying, oh, that's cute. And she was talking um, about people giving each other cute names. And she said, oh, that's kind of sweet or something like that. And then I wrote to her and I said, hey, um, I just saw you sitting in a chair with a light in front, so maybe like a screen or something. And she said, are you kidding? I'm, uh, I was in my chair, like watching a TV show from Asia where Asian people gave each other cute little names. And normally I think that's awkward, but in that case, it was kind of cute. That's crazy. Yes. And um, this was the big one because it was related to another person and it was so obvious. But like other things that are not necessarily connected to others, they happen every day, many times, <laughs> like all the time. Well, that's wonderful. Actually, I like the experiences. Just want to listen to them. <laughs> I always love that, like listening to other people's experiences. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like so um, connected and this is my normal life. My life is a spiritual experience in general and... Sometimes things feel basic, although I know that they only feel basic um, because I'm wrapped up in my thoughts. Because if I would pay attention and if I would be present in that moment, it would be a spiritual experience as well. I think that people talk too little about their spiritual experiences. I think people should definitely talk more about them but because there's like a little taboo on them. Yeah. People don't share it. We That's keep it all sort of like a secret. Yeah, because we feel strange with that probably. And there are so many TV shows or movies and people think it's fantasy. It's not yeah. real. Yeah. 
like since I've started to share about my own experiences and since I've been very open about it online um, or and even to my friends or people that I meet, people are like, oh, that's interesting. Or they're going to be like, oh, I don't believe in it. And I'm like, that's totally fine. Like, I don't mind if people do believe in it or don't. Nobody has to like me. Yeah. And what I think is people that have spiritual gifts, they feel like they're a loner or they're different from other people just anyways Mm -hmm. and they're trying to hold themselves back because of the feeling that they already have within them and maybe that's because it's like a stigma from movies like oh you're weird if you have certain experiences or it's scary um i have i actually hear that well sometimes not not a lot um that people are like oh that's that's really scary i don't think i want to talk about it i'm like that's fine really yeah because people are scared for like the truth that these things exist yeah and i understand because um the mind is very protective so the mind always um, works with the things that we can directly see or hear like with our limited limited senses and whatever is beyond that it is very uncertain to the mind so of course the first reaction is to shut down and even i know it that when i have like a bigger experience i can be terrified in the first moment i have to to relax myself and i have to relax myself into it to make this experience because that's something that happens quite often actually is that like as a psychic or someone that has a spiritual experience they're like oh shit this is really scary like is this really happening am i really seeing what i'm seeing am i really feeling what i'm feeling do i hear what i hear Uh, goosebumps (laughs) yes yeah and like automatically i think i told all like i talked about this in like the last podcast too like you automatically just jump in defending mode is because your your brain is like what is this this is new this is crazy this is uh, scary and so your fight, flight, and freeze mode is just turns like it switches on, even though it's like a totally different experience from what's in reality is actually dangerous. Yeah. And so instead of really looking at the experience from a distance and with your heart and from like a calm place you're going to be frantic and trying to source out inside of your head like okay what is this you have to you're trying to analyze and you're trying to rationalize it yes and that's where people make the mistakes like if like a lot of psychics even have this yeah and i think it's one of the biggest lessons that you can learn as someone that have has like spiritual gifts yeah, I, I did that mistake that I shut it down when I was not in my safe space. So, for example, I was not home or somewhere where I already knew, like, the surroundings. So um, I was, like, at my ex-boyfriend's house, for example, and um, I was alone. And in the middle of the night, I knew that I was going to be visited, which sounds uh, strange for some people probably. But I knew that I would see something now because then I get a really specific body sensation and I have like something like goosebumps all over my body but it's more heavy it's heavier than that everything's cold my whole body is completely cold and yeah I just I just feel it a lot especially in my back um, area and I just know okay I will see someone or something right now and because I didn't feel safe there because I was alone it was super dark and I didn't know the, the the space very well um I just started to shut it down. I was like, no, 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 not now, not now, not now. And then it disappeared. And um, yeah, because I thought it's something evil or it's something bad. And it, it was at that time. But right now I know that it's not like that, that it's just my judgmental mind that makes, that creates the story. Exactly. And of course you, uh, like we can debate about that for a long time. Like I believe that there are, um evil forces and that there are good forces um so of course like you can you can feel what is okay and what is not okay and personally i believe that when something is evil it will be like you can feel it in your body like you can literally feel fear like creeping into you yes like you can yeah it's like 
it's like something is like sort of like an oily something is like it's dripping into your own energy it's like lurking and just like trying to yes yes like, yes influ influence your own energy basically and you just can feel this intense fear and it's like it's scary as death itself like although i don't think death is scary at all but yeah it's like your like survival in, mode is activated like, yeah and you're like time. <gasps> like yes. if, like you're you're being like what is what's going on and that's really the moment you you realize okay something is in my space and it's not good i remember i told you that story and it was already in the last um, episode we had together i just i think i didn't explain it for real but the situation was quite crazy because there was actually something there was an entity that was super big and that could even touch me and everything and i could see it and i could interact with it just because i was so tired and i was really so tired that i was in this um anna is super fucked up mode um like with that attitude and i just said fuck off and i kept sleeping and i just turned around and just the next day or when i woke up i thought am I crazy? Like, how? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Because how could I not be afraid? Because it was, uh, it looked scary. And I've never seen something like that before. And then I even looked it up. And I did some research on the internet to find out, like, um, especially with that situation that I was in, that I couldn't move my body, I couldn't move my leg, then I saw this thing. And um, there are so many people who are writing about that so many yeah, people. like a sleep paralysis. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question for me? Yes. I want to give you your question back. What was your latest experience? I think something simple. Um, like I can feel when people are strongly thinking about me. And I've recently met like someone, uh, like a new friend. And then I can, like, I can feel this person's energy around me. Yeah. And then I can like I know this person is thinking about me and then inside I'm like hi like I'm just like hi yeah it's nice to see you and then I get a text message from this person <laughs> so yeah that's, cool. that's yeah um I think that's like my recent uh, smallest experience so let's say this person thinks about you and I do it also at the same time could you separate which energy is in your yeah. room so could you say this was um any and this was some, yes, someone yes, else definitely yes definitely yes yeah yeah definitely and that's also like i also have it with smell so i i smell this person as well mm -hmm. uh, because i like everybody has their own scent basically and so when someone thinks about me um or uh, very strongly I can literally like if I remember the scent like it's I don't always remember the scent of someone mm. um like as an example right now I don't remember your scent <laughs> 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 like I like I've, I haven't seen you for such a long time that I just don't remember and people scent always like it's it, it changes yeah like, just like people also change yeah, yeah. and grow um so yeah like I, I, I smell this person and I and I feel their presence with me and yeah then then basically yeah most of the time I get a call or I get a text or something. yeah or I text them because I'm like hey how are you and they're like oh I was just thinking, just thinking about, about you, you. Yeah. and I'm like I know yeah <laughs> I don't say that to them but <laughs> like, yeah I know yeah what was your creepiest experience so um I moved to my student place, like a school school campus, like the campus you live on as a student. I was studying uh, farming back then. And like I was, first I was going to live outside of my house, like by myself with like other students. And when I entered the room, I was going to stay in. It was like a really pretty room. Like it was quite big. I had like a, a bed that was super high. I love sleeping really high. Yeah high up to the roof and it was perfect nice view everything was good and like the first five minutes I was like wow I'm like super excited and then I still I start to feel like a bit weird and I see shadows in the corners of my eyes and like and I'm just pushing it away just ignoring it like you know what I don't know what you're doing but I'm happy with this room and so my parents leave because they helped me um, 
put all my stuff in the room. And I remember it was around evening time. And all of a sudden, I get like this massive pain in my head. Like I just, I just get this intense psychic attack. Like it was, it was horrible. Nobody else was in the house because like all the other students, they were going to a gathering or something. Like we would have dinner with everybody together. But I was, I was sitting there and I, all of a sudden I get this like really, it was so painful. And I saw this shadow in the room and like I saw this shadow just coming towards me. And I was like, fuck, what kind of person was in this room before me? I was like, fuck me, this is really scary. And so I basically, I asked like, hey, God, can you please, please help? I don't want this thing being with me while I'm on this school campus. So l- help me. And I basically, um, I felt this intense energy burst, like just coming straight out of me and it pushed it away. And the moment, like I could really just like feel as if I, I hit a ball, like I hit a ball or something. I hit something. Mm-hmm. And um, then I was gone. And at the moment I sent this blast out, my my boyfriend called me, boyfriend at the time. It was like, Carisha, what the hell was that? He, 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 he lived in Austria. And he was like, Carisha, what the hell just happened? I felt this intense burst, like something just exploded or something and I I was like yeah it was me (laughs) it was me I was like I don't know what it was but it was really scary and I explained it to him and later actually um I think maybe like five months later I was sleeping on the same campus but I had didn't sleep that well and I was sleeping in like a different house um and I went I remember that I woke up in the middle of the night with something choking me. It was the same thing. It was horrible. Like I was, I would, someone else was sleeping next to me. And um, this person, like, it was so creepy that they, that she didn't wake up. Like she didn't wake up. And I was like, I was like, (laughs) like trying to breathe. And it was so scary. And I saw like this shadow figure. And eventually I managed to, like I could move my body. It wasn't the sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. I could, I would literally, I, I like, I literally felt and I saw like red stripes all like around my neck. And um, so I tried to like, I jolted up upright. I called my spiritual teacher. I don't have him as my spiritual teacher anymore because of certain reasons. And I called him and I was like, Graham, help me please. <laughs> and um, well, we basically uh i think we spent like three hours in the middle of the night trying to work this thing away it was really 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 creepy it was really bad and i started puking all over and i was like Bleh. like yeah. like in a movie oh my yeah. god yeah <laughs> eventually i got rid of it and so it was do, I could do you have any, <laughs> do you have any idea why it was there or what it was what it wanted um, I was at that moment um, personally also going through some changes in my own life. Like I was learning to set my boundaries and like speaking my truth. And that I think that's why it would detect my, my throat. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was also like I was really deeply into spiritual stuff back then like i was like constantly trying to reconnect with god trying to reconnect to god and it was also it was really focused on blocking that connection and um because i slept so little it could like creep in and i was like i I was living a student life so that's not Mm -hmm. like the most i don't know how to describe that yeah i think most people who are dealing with that kind of topics they are not really into party i would say or are not really too outgoing anymore yeah Yeah. i was i was really outgoing i was really just like partying around and hang out with friends and yeah it just i just i lost my focus on 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 making this connection with god and so it kind of like it creeped in and i couldn't protect myself as well as i used to so my my borders weren't up 
and uh, yeah, it just uh, got through. Yeah, and it connected to something inside of me that um, that I had to overcome. So if I would overcome this creature, um, I could overcome this thing inside of myself too, because everything is still a mirror, and yes, it's there to learn. Yeah. yeah. So you think it was basically attached to you, not to the place itself. It, it it was definitely attached to the place, yes. Definitely okay. attached to the mm -hmm. place, yeah. But for some reason it also like it resonated or like it's you, yeah. Yeah. Like it just wanted to check it out. Something I don't really know. <laughs> Sometimes I don't really know what why why like, yeah. creatures want to come to you, but yeah. Wow. Do you have another question? Because I already have my next one. No, I actually don't. <laughs> so tell okay. Me. I was wondering, what is your opinion on alcohol? combined with spirituality so when you are into spiritual practices and you are on that let's say journey uh yeah to claim it a little bit like that do you recommend to keep your party lifestyle do you think alcohol is fine or well i think you should currently cover uh jacques ears because uh <laughs> i don't agree with his lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> no i think you should definitely stop doing that And uh, to be to be fair, I'm currently uh, a little bit more into that social life myself, and um, and yeah, what I like what you just notice, I sometimes I try and I see what happens with alcohol. You just notice that yeah, like your aura is weakening. It creates little holes in it. At least that's how I see it. Like what I see and experience it creates little holes and these holes make you vulnerable and it also of course the effect on your physical health is intense but um your body like it really the time that your body needs to recover it takes longer than you than you think it doesn't it doesn't take like two days it takes yeah. like a month or something and it really takes very long for your aura to heal And also like your mental state, your mental clarity is going away. And that's something you need um, to develop yourself because otherwise you're going back into that ego. You're going to take things personally again, which you shouldn't. Um, I think I was way more neutral or I didn't understand it until some weeks ago. I personally don't didn't drink for, I don't know, weeks and weeks and months i really don't know anymore when was the last time that i had one glass of wine or something it's really long ago already um mm -hmm. not because i'm planning it sometimes i'm even thinking yeah probably would be nice but I, I, something's holding me back and i just don't feel like and um the last the, well my the last eye-opening experience was not even with alcohol it was with something else i took some wheat drops Uh, some weeks ago oh, and, I've done... <laughs> yeah I've done that before and I had some yeah I was just flying a bit and everything was kind of okay and this time because I I forgot uh, how much is fine you know I was in a rush and I just I just licked a whole spoon and I just took something out of it and then the whole spoon was full of it and I just licked the whole spoon and um, I think it was too much um, <laughs> Um, because um, I went to a like what was it like a little open air in the city here and um, it was crowded it was super crowded so many people and I got the worst paranoia ever I have never dealt with paranoia before I didn't know what it is I never had social anxiety I never had anxiety I'm usually not afraid of things so um, the the strong feeling of fear is really unfamiliar to me like at a certain degree of course i can be worrying about things but like real fear that turns into anxiety social anxiety thinking that everyone's evil around me that people um are just bad or whatever that's nothing that i knew before or at least i didn't i didn't know that i know or something like that so it was terrible i couldn't stop thinking so the whole experience was like it, at some point it started to to do its thing and um i was at this at this open air and there were food trucks several food trucks outside and 
I've realized that I cannot stop thinking about bullshit, random shit, because I was planning while walking how many food trucks I would need to um, to arrange something myself, to plan a big party in the streets myself. I started to plan it like, okay, so many food trucks, so many people I would need to hire, I would need that kind of food. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had already the plan in my head, like written what I would need to do that. And when like my, I was with a friend and she was like, okay, like calm down a bit. And then she gave me just another topic. And then I took the other topic and I over, I was overthinking the other topic, whatever I got, I was overthinking it. Um, I, I had the feeling in some point that I'm existing like in that part of my body, like this is my whole existence. I'm just thinking and like, there is nothing, nothing else. Like this is the the, the Wouldn't main. Would you say that it's just a, this part of your body? <laughs> no, and until here because I felt the anxiety somewhere okay. there. Okay. Yeah, because there were so many people, and I was just scared of them. They all looked evil to me. I asked my friend, "Do I look normal? I feel like I have no control over my face. Um, am I smiling? Am I looking like weird?" And she was like, "No, oh, you're smiling. You are shining as always. You look like super friendly." And I thought I look like the most terrible monster and people are all evil and whatever. And in some point, because I needed to get out of the crowd, crowd, like out of this crowd, and I just had to relax and I was just breathing, breathing. And I remembered that I know reality. So this was a bad trip, I thought. But I remember reality. And re reality is that I'm connected. I'm not thinking so much. I'm... I'm in co in eternal connection with everything. That's how I feel, like loved, supported, all that. And I forgot about this feeling. I couldn't reach the connection, which made me understand that I am always connected. Just in that kind of state, I don't feel this connection. So um, yeah. like most people probably who have anxiety, you are overthinking, you are just living in your thoughts. And you forget about the connection that you have with this world and this was a terrible feeling and the only good part was to recognize that and to also understand that at least with this weed drops i knew that i felt disconnected so i was half just halfway in this bad movie in this bad experience and i've realized when i drink alcohol I'm also disconnected. I just don't realize that I am. So all the negative feelings that I have, all this um, or positive thoughts, whatever, but the fact that I'm caught up in them, I don't realize it. So I'm completely into the story that I'm telling myself. Yeah. And what I've also noticed with Alco is your anxiety builds up a lot, but especially after, uh, like the, the day after. Like when you think the alcohol is out of your system, oh, you're, you're right. not drunk anymore. That's the moment your anxiety like starts hitting because a lot of resources in your body are like tired. Like your intestines, they are working really hard to make sure you're healthy again, like your liver and everything. So all the energy is going towards your body. And so you don't have that much energy. You start to feel tired. And that's when the anxiety grows. Mm -hmm. And builds up and then you're going to doubt yourself you're like uh oh, i can't do anything because i'm tired i'm a lazy shit i can't do something i'm not worth anything like all these thoughts are going to build up yeah that's uh <laughs> that's yeah. what all it does yeah and, and and even thoughts like did i do something wrong last night oh, or last yeah. day that's yes exactly like i always start to feel bad for the people that i've talked to for some reason and i think oh, i was such a bitch although i i wasn't maybe um <laughs> like if i like <laughs> seriously like if i talk to these people again i'm like oh, hey sorry for like what i said last night i'm like what yeah i'm like oh okay yeah it's like this kind of weird anxiety and this feeling yes. of guilt it just creeps in and it will take you down. It will like it will, trying to drag you down with it. I have a next question for you. What's your favorite feeling? Oh, feeling of God. God. I love this feeling. It's just, I think it's really 
like difficult to describe like if you felt it you know what it feels like it's not only love because love is something by itself but it's like a combination of of having like surrendering like having someone to just like carry you or something and um of course an intense feeling of yeah love is there because yeah it, i don't really know how to explain it as well yeah but it's, i i okay. love that feeling okay yeah yeah i agree <laughs> it's the most relaxing thing in the world <laughs> it's like complete surrender it's like complete surrendering like you don't have to worry about anything and you can just walk freely you don't have to think about anything it's just like you go, yeah. you, you just go and you just let yourself be carried by by God. Yeah, I, I just love that feeling. Do you have a question? Yeah, I had like, what's your scariest experience? Did I, or, I don't know if I already asked that question. <laughs> no, I asked you and it yeah. was, it was the, the whole um, scene yeah. from The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I like, I don't watch scary movies because things are way too realistic for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so I actually I wanted to ask you that question too. And oh, have you ever have you ever done something like with an Ouija board? Have you ever tried to summon entities? Have you ever um, done I've ordered a board once. Yeah, you told me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um because I it was kind of pretty and I found it on Etsy and I thought, oh, I would like to see how it looks like because yeah, it looked very nice. And it was all handmade, I think. And I I wrote you, yeah, I told yeah. you. That. And you said, no. And, then you, <laughs> and I remember I asked why you explained it to me. And then I didn't pick it up at the delivery station. So I I never went there. So it's, I think it traveled back. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't touch it. But I don't even remember the reason, actually. What was it? Why shouldn't we... You you wanted to, um, because you had the feeling that there was someone or something that was trying to communicate with you, but you couldn't receive the messages. So you wanted to receive the messages through the Ouija board. Oh, yeah. I think that was the reason. Yeah. yeah I, now sure. that I asked this question, yeah. I'm like, oh, wait a second, we have actually talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then I told you, like, yeah, girl, don't do it. You never know what's on the other side. When I was a kid and my parents brought me to psychics because, like, I had psychic experiences, every psychic told me, don't you ever play with those things i got a community question i forgot about that almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Sorry. But, it, but yeah but now I, but now it perfectly fits because the question was can it happen that spirits don't want to be contacted so it would be kind of disrespectful if you just try to contact them okay. yes i can feel people that have passed away that's yeah. my gift one of the gifts i have and a common question I get from people is like, oh, uh, can you contact my grandmother? Can you contact my mom or my father? No, nor will I ever do so. And the reason is I am not going to contact the dead because they are dead. They are in peace. If they want to reach out, they will. They will reach out to you. And that's by their choice it's actually more like a one-way stream so when i'm talking to someone i can have i can feel the presence of someone like a, like even someone that's still alive um and this when i most of the time i talk talk about it and i say like hey i can feel the presence of xyz um like is there anyone in your family that is that has passed away or is there someone that is present right now like that is still alive but has a very present present in your life or something i don't know how to say that but yeah yeah and often it's like someone had passed away and they can literally like i feel them present and sometimes people that have passed away they still want to bring over like information and they still want to give a message um and so they will but i only communicate to these people when they first come to me because then I know that the way is open then I know it's okay only that moment I can I'm okay making contact with them because they're not there for our service I have one more question 
when you talk to guys when you are like dating how do people react to your abilities or do you keep it a secret i don't think so <laughs> no of course i don't keep, no I, i can't even keep it a secret because the moment i'm dating someone I, like his presence just keeps popping up like he's everywhere in my space and he's constantly <laughs> like it's it's insane yeah um, i i don't uh i don't really feel attracted to spiritual people like Because for me, they're floating too much and then um, I'm starting to float and then I'm just losing myself a little bit in the process when I'm with someone that is really spiritual or really uh, focused on psychology or uh, mindsets. Like mindset is okay, but like some people are just so focused on this space in their head and being there a lot of t of the time myself of like trying to understand what is really happening. Um, of course, you do a lot of with your feelings, but also like you tend to go up to your head a lot. Um, I don't really feel attracted to it. <laughs> They just pull me out. Um, but then of course I talk about it and they're most of the time, like if I, if I date someone or something in that way they're most of the time they're just fine with it and often they have a very spiritual mom <laughs> so they're like just talk to my mom just talk to my <laughs> mom <laughs> and that's just so funny and they're yeah. like you girls just do your thing like i'm just gonna do something else yeah yeah and um and I, i've actually never had i've never really been with someone that wasn't supportive of it mm -hmm. Um, I like I rarely I rarely meet people in general that are not supporting of, um, sp yeah, psychic abilities or spirituality in general. Yeah. So even when they don't really deal with that, they kind of accept that it exists and they accept yeah. you with your. Yeah, and sometimes they come to me with questions, and they actually start to experience their own spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. yeah although i like i don't push anyone like i don't say anything to like i'm like do your own thing and they are starting to get interested themselves and often yeah they start to use, go and do their own spiritual journey and then we grow apart and... yeah <laughs> yeah. beautiful that's cool. sort of like how it always goes yeah how would it be for you like dating spirit would you date a spiritual guy um <laughs> a guy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, i know i know i, know. I mean I've, 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 i've asked you so many times to marry me but you just won't say yes so i know what you would just like to be <laughs> please please marry me hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no am i stealing your girlfriend <laughs> no 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 he lost his and i'm helping him to find her oh uh, yeah he lost her, um his girlfriend in the washing machine That's really sad. Yeah, his girlfriend's name is Hope. So Jacques lost Hope in the washing machine. And since then he's drinking and he's like heavily drinking. And he's also a demotivational sock. That's why his um, whole content on Instagram is like, he tries to push out motivational quotes, but they are kind of strange and not really motivating. It's actually the opposite. The idea right now is that she got lost in another dimension. So she got probably into the fifth dimension or something. So at least spiritual teachers are talking about the fifth dimension a lot. And um, I thought maybe she's there or Jacques is, and Jacques is trying to get into a better head space and um, emotional space. So he's doing meditation and he's doing affirmations and everything to raise his vibration and to get into the fifth dimension. That's to his... find his girl back. Oh, that's... Yes, yes. And that's why he's on his spiritual journey, actually. To you, find should write a, you should write a book about that. That's I, so cute. That's, yeah, that's the plan because I have the whole story. I already know if he will find hope. And I would like to write that, yeah. Yes, do that. That's really nice. Even you can also make like a little uh, series about it on TikTok. Yeah, he has an account already, and I, I was yeah, I know, I know. I introduced like... him a bit, but I, I, that's the plan. I really want to do that. It's just that, um, yeah, I need, I yeah, I just need to film more. It could actually also be a really nice children's book. Yeah, 
Yeah, probably. But um, since he's such a grumpy, maybe it's too much because he's really and a drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's kind of sweet, but uh, it it would have it would be something like a SpongeBob, but a bit heavier, probably. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but back back to your question. So I don't know if I would date spiritual people. I think I never did, so I don't really know what it would be like. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I really don't know, and I'm not really dating. I don't know. So maybe I mean I think it could be interesting because um, um, in the past it was always me who was dealing more with that kind of topic so yeah you were just more focused on your spiritual journey and not so much on like whatever yeah going on. on my self-development in general mm -hmm. like thinking a lot feeling a lot and um so i think the guys were never so much in touch with their um with their with themselves somehow <laughs> so um i was always the person that they could learn from and I think it would be interesting to have someone who is probably further than me and who probably has more yeah. experience. I would I would love that maybe or I would like to try that but in general I'm not searching because I don't have time. When you go bar hopping or whatever like I'm usually in the headspace of don't touch me, don't talk to me, go away, please go away. Because... I just want to dance. I just want to dance if I just want to dance. Yeah, I just talk to my friends because I don't really go out alone you know so of course mm -hmm. I, i'm with someone so i don't want someone stealing my time and that's why i'm i, I was reading a quote these days was super funny like yes i'm single and unavailable and uninterested <laughs> you know like i don't even always have the time to to hang out with my friends like i'm and i'm currently just so focused on my personal development on how i want to grow and who i want to be as a person and And, and working um and going to the gym i'm going to the gym right now like wow. that's a big step for me <laughs> i love it <laughs> really yeah i love it like i used to go but then i got scared of people and and now i'm yeah. conquering my own fear and yeah, yeah cool. what's your goal big muscles. My knee. no ah. no I, not the big... <laughs> <laughs> so i have a few uh, knee injuries um that i like i want to strengthen my knees And overall, just, oh, I want a six-pack. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Then I think we have it. Yeah, I think We so have too. a great episode. I thank you so much. You're Krish. welcome. Oh, by the way, just for the listeners, uh, yeah, of course, if you have any questions about these spiritual topics, let us know in the comments down below and subscribe to our channel. And, I, and Anna, can I actually post this episode on my YouTube too? Of course. And really like it? I love it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, my cool. darling, I love you and I hope love to you see more. you soon. Yes, do that. <laughs> bye bye. bye. bye.